There we go. So welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, we are gathered here to think about AI and other things um, as we go. And um, we're going to do quick introductions. Um, Scott, we always pick on the newest person to <laughs> go first. Do you yeah. want to, um, more officially, before we talked here, we uh, did talk to you a little bit, but more officially describe what you do, who you are, why you're here, what your interest is. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So my name is Scott Christensen. Um, my son is in Chris's uh, class right now as a senior, and um, I work in education as well. Uh, I work for a school district here called Canyon School District. I'm there. I'm on the secondary um, ELA uh, team. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I focus on uh, middle school, but I also help out with high school. I've taught uh, six through eleven, um, and uh, yeah, that's where. And and that's where CLA, I am. you focus on mainly. Yes. Okay. Yep. Cool. Cool. Um, and I've done some PD. I did some. Um, professional learning statewide, and then also um, uh, at, we have a conference, USET conference um, where we talked about this, like, well, chat GPT, because that had just come out. And then I did some training um, with the state GT, uh, gifted and talented uh, coordinators, on how they could use it to, um, you know, kind of create uh more vertical uh, differentiation in the classes. And then, mm -hmm. um, and then I also did some, I've done a bunch of training or some training in my district. So I'm really excited just to learn more about how to harness it. Cool. 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 Um, we have a couple of people joining us, which is good, but go ahead, Chris, they know you. <laughs> Introduce yourself, Chris. Sure. Uh, yeah, Hi, Jessica, we're just doing introductions. You'll have to find out who Scott is eventually, but you will. Yeah. Uh, my name is Chris Sloan. I Hi, teach man. high school English and media at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. And so my uh, I teach a lot of seniors English right now, and they're, um, the writing that's on their mind is the college essay. And so um, it seems like um, I'm doing everything I can to try to help them along the way because it's pretty high stress, high seems like it's high stakes to them. Uh, and so they care about it, which I like as a writing teacher, uh, because a lot of times I come up with assignments that I'm excited about, but maybe they don't really, um, you know, they don't share that enthusiasm always. But the college essay, like most of them buy into it because they have to do it and they've been told like it's important. So, yeah. Cool. Jessica, you're next. In the Hi. Hi. Welcome. I'm um, glad you can make it back with us. Go ahead. Yeah, I know. And I actually found the table. <laughs> um, I'm Jessica and I'm the director of the Central Arizona Writing Project in Tempe, Arizona. And um, I'm excited to be here. Oh, cool. Uh, Terry. <clears throat> uh, Terry Elliott, I live in Kentucky, I'm retired. But I don't think I've ever been any busier than. <laughs> well, I know there've been busier times, but uh, I'm really interested in what uh, what Chris is doing with the uh, uh, admission essay. I did some work myself today and yesterday, uh, trying to stress test the uh, Paul's prompt with a with a uh, admission. Uh, essay that was not an essay, but we, we are going. We're going to ask you to read that and just okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I'm really pleased to, to be with all of you all and uh, folks who are willing to. Uh, the Press reach that. extends. <laughs> being, their, their grasp is their, what they're trying to grab is way beyond what, uh, and and it's really wonderful. So cool. grateful. Hi, Bob. Hi, folks. It's a quick introduction. Yeah. Yep, Bob Montgomery. I work at a company called Westhead in the Bay Area, and I'm here to just get smarter about ways my colleagues and I can engage with AI to get better at the, all the things we're, we're doing in the education space. So helping adults get, get more productive and more effective. Marina. 
Hi, I'm Marina, and I'm a third grade teacher in New York, and I like coming when I can, stay up this late and, and learn. I still don't have students yet, so wow. I don't know how it's going to go now. Once you next. get students, you can't stay up this late. I get it. I don't know if you'll see me that much more, but I'm going to try. Yeah, yeah. Well, we would love to have more people just like you on the show, but on this in this meeting. But that's cool, cool. It's great you're here. Um, and and Marina and I did work this summer with uh, some uh, pre-service uh, student teachers. Um, so that's some of our connection. So um, let me just try to give some context here, Chris. You already mentioned the. Um, the uh, the essay the the graduate the sorry college admissions essay, mm -hmm. and um, that's and that is kind of what we're focused on. But Ella, um, Terry's going to take us in a slightly different direction, but we'll see. One of the things we did last week and go back and and look at that and there's also some links on this page for that is we we took an example of such an essay. And we, we did a peer review with it in that we there were four things we asked um, AI to give response to. There were some technicalities with one of those um, prompts. And I did actually correct that, by the way. So, But I don't want to go back too much of all that. Um, we also talked about, and Jessica, maybe you could just say a word about the importance of audience for us on this. Um, and, and so we said that. And then we'll we'll take it from there is that I, I didn't tell you it's going to put you on the spot like that but that's okay just the importance of the audience of yeah children. how do you how do how do kids find who their audience is so um they need help with this so it's one of the reasons it's such a scary genre besides that there's real high stakes attached to it for them but the genre is to an unfamiliar audience and you know, writing project teachers are familiar and do this all the time where they have writing for real audiences and purposes. But for a lot of students, it may be the first time that they're writing for a real audience and purpose that has such stakes attached to it. So demystifying what and who the audience is is really helpful, um, which is also hard because we don't always know colleges and college admissions committees are closed doors. But we do know that that there are people that want um, students and in, in their settings and context and their um, students often, when I've asked in, in research studies who they imagine the audience to be, it's often someone with a different color skin than their own and often someone much older and with glasses on and kind of your stereotypical college professor. And one of the things that's helpful is to sort of uh, alter that perception. There may be people like that reading their essays, but there's also others, their peers, like who are just a few years ahead of them reading. And there's professors and there's people on the committee that that are not as different as them. Um, and I think that's really helpful for them to understand and that they want diversity of experience and they want to know who they are. Um, uh, so, Any, anybody have any comment or question about this area or this notion? Um, well, I'll chip in just because yeah. I'm actually following along with um, Jessica's approach, you know, in in the book. And um, I did slow down because last week you had mentioned that, uh, or I think we talked about how AI can help with some stuff, but it's like human is important at certain steps. And so mm -hmm. it seemed like the step of um, trying to talk about or coming across those, um, let's see, you called it a strong topic, right? So mm -hmm. like that, maybe it helps to talk to humans about. And, and, and so we're kind of in that phase right now. So in class, we did some pre-writing just like you did. And, and I had surveyed the students like, how helpful would it be to do pre-writing for this? And, and thinking about just the topic itself. And it was a pretty strong response. They're like, yes, we would really like this. We need to uh, spend That's time cool. generating, you know, generating ideas. And I think in the past, I would say I jumped pretty quickly ahead to what's your topic and where's the essay. And so I think um, 
we talked today, I asked their feedback on how they thought the pre-writing went earlier this week. And, you know, as probably not surprising, some of them said, well, if I'm already farther along on my essay, it wasn't as helpful, but other mm -hmm. kids were like, well, I'm not that far along and it was helpful. So I thought slowing it down and, and kind of talking a little bit about those, those topics and journaling a lot about them seems to be pretty good. So that's where we are as far as the the stage goes. And so I'm, I'm now about ready to talk more about like, who do you, who do you envision the audience to be, which is where I think the AI is going to come in a little more handy. Yeah. That's cool. uh, I wanted to say, I was really happy to see the language shifting here, you know, traditional purpose and audience, which is fine, but as when I when I got to my retirement, I started using different terms. I don't know if they're significant, but I called it empathy, and uh, oh, what's the other one? Uh, not identity, but uh, I can't remember right now. But but it was happy. To, I'm really happy that you all are. Oh, imagination, empathy, and imagination, and. Uh, because that's what I'm hearing, you, Jessica, you said imagined. And Chris, you're talking about how the AI is going to help for them to flesh out the identity of, of, the, uh, of the grader or whatever you want to call it, essay, essay a reader. And I'm, I'm really happy to see that because that's the way I would rather go too. I'd rather go in that direction. Because I think empathy is a bigger term and a meatier term. And uh, uh, so, thank you. Waiting to see if anybody else wants to jump in or. Right. Bob, oh, are you? Are you? Yeah, there you yeah go. Just, just a quick thought. I didn't get mm -hmm. to watch the recording from last week, which I missed, but I'm just curious um, if you, what, what discussion has occurred around the notion of of an audience in this particular case where uh, the reader is likely to react to a, a personal statement so personally and the idea of an AI reaction isn't personal, at least. And, and I'm just wondering, like, how, how, how have we been wrestling with the notion of standardizing f feedback on something that is so contingent on the connection between the writer and the one individual, or maybe they're multiple in the case of a personal statement. But I just, did, did you guys explore that last week? Has that been ground you've covered already and moved on? We can mention it again, go ahead. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to. I, I just we, talked to, we talked a little bit about, um, and Chris did is more talking about this, but just the fact that the college admission essay is so vulnerable and personal right. and that it is, um, and it has something at stake and an unfamiliar audience. Um, but we also, we actually thought about how AI could serve as a way, uh, as a safe place okay. uh, to share at first before sharing with peers and teacher to get feedback in a neutral way um, cool. and to see how that feels in terms of comfort level. So I kind of like that way of thinking about AI as a, as an uh, affordance in, in terms of personal and also through my research one of the things i found is that actually the better the essays that come up are, are really successful are often the ones that are really personal and not trying to fit some generic story of um someone else's experience that they think would be impressive so is the idea then that ai can be prompted to notice those strengths when they're unique and authentic and not generic or cliches, God forbid. Um, is that the idea that we can train AI to look and validate, wow, that's really powerful as a, as a unique quality or personal quality and thus encourage it or yeah. I, guess what, yeah. I would add um, that it's oftentimes a really personal topic but ai can also look for those things that are good storytelling okay. mm -hmm. and and good writing um so it's not you know like kids are often reluctant to share this piece yet there are some commonalities like maybe it should sparkle a little bit with the writing and i think it can analyze for some of that stuff cool 
Okay, thank you. That's super helpful for context. And, and you know, not so much connect with it on a personal level. And the peer review, review templates that we looked at last week, I think, do give some feedback that that helps the person with their personal journey as well. Mm -hmm. um, the, so the we, right at the beginning, sort of like this last week, I, I said let's put a pin in it, and then last week at the end of the week, I did some experimenting with. I went to um, Perplexity AI and said, okay. Um, who are these uh, college counselors, um, admissions officers? What do they want, right? And 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 even in my question, I began to wonder, like we're not characterizing. So what my goal here is to create a thinking partner, or let's call it a template, right? That gives feedback to a student um, from the perspective of an admissions officer. Fair enough. So what perplexity AI gave me wasn't things like, you know, their, their race or, or that they like to play softball or whatever, right? That's not the profile we're gathering. It's more like, what are the kinds of things they're looking for when they read the, these essays? And perplexity does a decent job of research. It gave me five things and I, and I, I've documented all this, but, um, I'll say it very quickly um, before we get to Terry's poem, which takes us in a different direction, but in a good way. Um, the um, what what I eventually asked it to do was, okay, here are these five things that uh, perplexity is saying based on the um, these six sites, right? Um, saying that admissions officers look at. So just to say that's one place where we could do more research. <laughs> and get a better list. I just did it quick and dirty um, that way. Um, and then I, I went through a couple of iterations here, not to go in that direction too much. What I ended up with was um, to ask AI to look at an essay and say, of those five things, give me one here that the student is really strong on. Describe why they're strong in that and then say what they could do to improve, and then give me one that they're not so strong on and say what they could do to improve, give, give some examples. Tested that a dozen times, and, and so we have that to kind of look at, all right? So, and I'm happy to slow down and, and describe that process, but what would be a really kind of amazing is if other people were kind of creating these um, admissions officers and testing them against the text and see what happens. Okay. Any questions on what I just said or thought? Paul, do you en yeah. envision do you envision us having uh, like uh, prompt benchmarks for different kinds of profiles? Like you got your I don't know how what what they would be, but you might have. Uh, you know, different types of schools, different levels of competition, you know, mm -hmm. all that. Uh, it just seems, it seems like it's the, it's somebody's going to do it for money. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's interesting. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that. So the officer you would define, you would define also what college they're coming from. Yes. Yeah. Or, or type maybe even. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm an Ivy and or I'm on a local state college, yeah. Hadn't thought of that. Good thought. Feels feels slippery to me. Oh yeah. I mean, In right. what way? I don't know. It just <laughs> I just I just don't think that's that's just like a cliff to jump off of. I, I think because of the common app and because of the trend away from prestigious schools by some some folk, I think we, I'm just not sure that's, it feels like a minefield that we don't need to go there. Mm -hmm. for well, Paul mentioned profiling and that, that you know, boom, that, that just, my antennae just went wiggly. But I mean, I, you know, this profiling is not a bad word. It's a useful word. It's just, it has lots of connotations. So Jessica, how does that ring with your research on audience? Um. I think it would be problematic yeah. I, for all the reasons. I just think 
um, that would be sort of stereotyping or it just dangerous playing field. I think the 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 thing that I'm most excited about for the AI is doing what you were talking about, Paul, where where it's creating really like a thinking partner for the writing aspect. Um, mm -hmm. And and I'm not sure how many you much you we need by an authentic audience that isn't actually an authentic. Uh, you can give strategies for responding and templates for responding, but I don't think you can create a template that would capture who any of these actual audiences are because they're really diverse and different, even as, and yeah. especially at the Ivies. So in getting clear, because this is, this is like one use case, right? But getting clear on what we mean by um, a profile or a persona, right? We might not mean the biographical details of that person. Mm -hmm. but in this case, what we mean is how do they judge the essays, I mm -hmm. think, right? Um, More like a writing criteria? teacher. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, all right. Um, but, but going back a little bit, Terry, I, I think this idea of a bunch of us creating, you know, at least six or whatever, a group of us creating these ourselves, testing them ourselves, and then sharing them with each other is the way to get to something that's useful, I think. Um, and, and I try to kind of explain that a little bit, but um, trying to get to the perfect prompt is not the goal. The goal is to kind of make imperfect ones, see how they work, and then adjust them and look at each other and say, oh, I want that part of that one in here. And I think working like that together. And that's how we've kind of built the tools to work. Both on not comment, now comment and AI Mojo works that way on Youth Voices, just to say. I also we're, like we're though, jumping Paul, through a lot here fast. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I like too, Paul, what you and um, we talked about this last week too, but there's moments where you realize, oh, actually humans do that better. And mm -hmm. like a conversation about audience and demystifying the audience is actually like Chris, what you are doing, it seems more helpful than creating a some sort of profile on AI to do that conversation. Does that make like, I don't know. I just think it's really neat to figure out the places where, oh, actually a human conversation is helpful here, but the AI is helpful here. Yes. I, I don't, I, the thing is though, we don't know yet, like what no. the AI is going to do. No. So I think, yes, we should always be ready for that, but we also need to kind of jump out and test themselves. So. Terry, could we turn to you and um, lighten us up a little bit, so to speak? I'm going to share my screen and bring the poem up. Is that okay? Okay. Um, and then you'll read it for us. So Terry wrote a poem that is not a, well, you'll, you'll you can explain it. Okay. Um, I'm going to hopefully there it is. Okay, that's now on your screen. Um, if you're new, uh, Scott and anybody else, um, you can adjust this and make it bigger or smaller as you need to. Okay. Um, okay. So, do you want to briefly explain how you ended up writing this, and but then read it for us? Well, <clears throat> I read. Um your process post about mm -hmm. what you'd gone through. And uh, I got to go back and reread it again. That's, you know, it's just wonderful to, for you to think out loud like that. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, and then I, I thought, well, how can I stress test this uh, prompt? And um, instead of writing a, uh, a, an essay, right. yeah. I decided to write a poem <laughs> about that is my admissions letter. So I'll just read it. Admonitions Great. for an admissions letter. Go ahead. Admit me. I have a ticket here and you have the venue. Judge me. Estimate me. My net worth. Go ahead. Bottom line me as if you know what I might become or even what I am. I don't know you. I don't even want to know you. 
or belong to any club that might want you or me as a member. <laughs> My fan club is small. If I admit you, then you must love salamanders, hummingbird moths, and Walt Whitman. If I admit you, then you must hate bosses, war in all forms, loggers, realtors, hunters. Mostly, you must oppose admission for any good reason. You must admit me for all the wrong reasons, whatever those might be. Let us both decide. Go ahead. Yours, not. <laughs> <clears throat> so the Make idea was that, yeah go ahead yeah. the idea was to create um a contrary um essay mm -hmm. as contrary as i could imagine it I'm, I'm sure it could be done a lot better than this but uh then i ran it you know i i had your so as a prompt response Carrie, yeah Carrie, i just want to jump in and ask um, and to kind of keep this on topic yep. by asking people to what we want to note here is what what value, even with this poem, um, we get from these prompts and, mm -hmm. and AI's response? Yeah. So we're going to kind of go around and ask people for that. Okay. Do you want to keep reading? I think it's okay to. <laughs> you mean the the, 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 so. the yeah. response prompt? Yeah. Uh, of course, it's he's absolutely long. happy to provide feedback, <laughs> as if it has a choice, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's dive into the essay. Strengths, one, uniqueness and contribution. Now, these were your categories, right, Paul? Mm -hmm. um, and so it like my line, my fan club is small. Uh, I don't know how it's judging uniqueness, but that's kind of what poetry is supposed to be, is a, a unique voice. And I guess it hasn't seen the word salamanders, humming, murd, moss and before. So... Yeah, uh, I don't know why. I think, just, it's just re, re. I think. <laughs> oh, I think sorry. the commentary is. Good. Yeah, we'll get okay. to the commentary. You yeah. just want me to read it? I think so. Okay. Uh, uniqueness and contribution. Quote from your essay: My fan club is small. If I admit you, then you must love salamanders, hummingbird moths, all women. Positive feedback. This section highlights your unique interests and sets you apart from other applicants. It shows that you have a distinct personality and are willing to share your quirks and passions. This kind of self-expression can make a memorable impression on the admissions committee. Something to improve, oh yeah, strengths and improvements. That was part of your deal. Um, to enhance this strength, you could provide a brief explanation of why these specific interests matter to you. This would give the admissions officers a deeper insight into character and thought processes. All Keep right. going. Yeah, yeah well, well, let's slow down for a second and get some feedback or thoughts okay. about that. So I want to say first that these categories are not written anywhere. I told you. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, I got them from, you know, Perplexity AI, and they got them from reading six websites, right? Right. About this. Got so it. we could come up with better categories. So I'm, I'm happy and love to hear those ideas. But how helpful do you think this might be? Or what do you think about what AI gave back just with this first one? <laughs> Are we, yeah, any thoughts? <laughs> well, it did pick out uniqueness, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I mean, the whole poem was pretty unique for the genre especially, but. So it did what it was supposed to do. Okay. Um, I think it's kind of predictable that the something to improve that it might say um, provide more detail kind of seems like that's the, mm -hmm. the takeaway. Sure. What, what, what's, I, mean, I, I like the, I like the feedback that um, on two. Where, yeah. um, where it says consider ex oh, don't, oh, don't, wait uh, consider expanding on how your unconventional approach will contribute positively to the college community mm -hmm. uh, showcase uh, you know I guess that goes back onto that uniqueness but just sort of that outside of the box thinking breaking the rules but doing it for the right reasons I guess mm -hmm. thanks other thoughts as you're looking at this, or questions too, 
<laughs> well, one of the things that uh, mm -hmm. about that particular issue there is, um, I guess it's a weakness of AI is its incapacity for uh, inference. You know, it can't, it can't uh, infer from all the context that it's given that it's an unconventional approach that will be positive for the community. And it doesn't, doesn't talk about what the real capacity is for a fresh perspective. You know, it's all generic like most AI stuff is. Yeah, I was trying to imagine what I would do as a writer um, <laughs> yeah, if I got this feedback. And I feel like, um, you know, one mm -hmm. approach might be to keep the poem as is and then to maybe, you know, add an addendum or something yeah. maybe, but but not to add that to the poem anyway, you know, the things that it's, it would make the poem a lot worse if you tried to, I, well, I feel like it would maybe lose some of the magic if you um, added all those things. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be a poem. I think what, it, yeah. what's striking me is that it doesn't understand what a poem is. Mm -hmm. It's poetry is beyond words and what all it can deal with is words. And that's that's my my analysis. It also makes me think about how. I mean, I think the poem is a stellar piece of writing and an amazing college admissions piece. Like it would blow an admissions panel away. <laughs> and in that case, like, what do you do with? And this doesn't necessarily happen in when I'm teaching high school or my first year college. Like, you rarely get a piece where you're like, this is just stunning. I don't have any changes, <laughs> but like AI isn't really like if you're building a template for it to answer questions, it's built to ask those questions, whether they're going to be helpful or not. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's the purpose of a stress test. And I think yeah. that's, that's one of the things we should be doing to, uh, to, to this. And Paul's got a great idea here. We all start working on, like, I wouldn't mind adding to the poem, just to just to get the reflections that uh, that the prompt generates from that, if anything, it might not generate anything new. I would hypothesize that it would generate nothing new, and then I would add to it and see what happened. That'd be fun. So, um, and let me let me. Uh, I, I'm now I'm scrolling up to some of, uh, and and I hope that. Some of you can look at this text at some point. I'll, yeah, it's I'll pretty sure impressive. But yeah. It's um, good stuff. But here's, um, I'm at now, keep in mind. Okay. So, losing track of time, the essay we looked at last time, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go find it. Well, actually, hold on. Let's do it this way. So, let's just show one example. And we're saying, um, Testing this stuff on both platforms, I think, is interesting and, and important um, because you get something different in different architectures, um, and knowing that is is worth knowing. And then, Terry, you did it directly with ChatGPT. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So, so all of that is worth saying. But on the screen now, do I have – is now comment on the screen? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So here's the essay. And, and over here, uh, uh, Chris, do you mind reading this? <laughs> Just to sure. start off here? Yeah. Uh, this is what we got back from the college admissions counselor on now comment. Yeah. Okay. We'll just uh, do the oh. first one again. And then if you can read through the others as, as you're listening or whatever. Yeah, go ahead. Um, do you want me to read the prompt, uh, the essay again or the strengths? No, no, the strengths, yep. Okay, strengths. Focus on personal attributes and skills. The strength of your essay in this aspect is your vivid exploration of your passion for acting and fashion. Your words not only describe this, but show it. Particularly the line, I find acting enticing because I tend to overthink things in life and acting allows me to prepare for various scenarios that I've contemplated too much previously in real life situations. Shows how acting has been central in shaping your perspectives and daily activities. Additionally, your explanation of why you enjoy running a fashion business depicts your entrepreneurial mindset and dedication, fundamental traits of great students. Something to improve, perhaps touch on the transformative power of these pursuits on your character. 
mention specific instances where you noticed a change in your attitudes, viewpoints, or behaviors as a result of these intriguing endeavors. Okay. Again, there's a second um, category. It does sort of the same thing on, and then it finds a third category to improve on. And in this case, it's uh, looking for uniquenesses to improve on. Thoughts about what we're getting back here? Does it help the writer? If you were the writer, or just any any thoughts as you're looking at this? Um, I'll chip in right away because um, I okay. was just working with people today about this. And what I tried to, I mean, we we did all kinds of little things, but I had them try to, um, you know, describe an anecdote to bring people to something that would illustrate one of these desirable traits that you can pick out of the common app, like curiosity or resiliency. And um, mm -hmm. both of these prompts, both the one for Terry and this one are asking people for like more details. And I think that or, in general, I think I say that a lot to people in this kind of writing. It's like, it's not just know? AI that does that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, um, they tend to, they get caught up in the big picture and they tend to speak in, um, you know, abstractions a lot. Um, like I know resilience, uh, but they don't often illustrate how they, um, have shown resilience. So I feel like that's actually a lot of the stuff I've been talking about with them. And so, for example, we, well, that's enough for now. So I had a question, a technical sure. question. I have no idea. Sure. <clears throat> what if we created a, an LLM of just college admissions essays? Uh, and we would benchmark them as, oh, this is really good. Uh, this is proficient and this sucks. So if we created prompts that would work off of those, would that be a lot different? What's an LLM? That's the kind of the database that like some of them are freaking huge that, uh, that the uh, AI draws from to answer the questions. Large language models. Models. Yes. Yeah, so, Terry, that's, that's getting a lot closer to kind of my struggle with the with the intelligence mm -hmm. of the of the of the response and the how, like. I just don't. You're, you're evaluating the writing of an 18 year old person, <laughs> yeah. not a 40 year old, not an 80 year old, an 18 year old, and so where does that come in? So all the mindsets of the of an admissions officer's of assessment are contextualized by specific things and their database of past things they've read or criteria they value is pretty unique so if we can create a way for that to be captured and used for feedback for students in these practice rounds then we're on to something otherwise i think we're just talking about writing 101 which is yeah. fine, which is fine. I mean, writing one on one's great for, for, for anything. What do you mean by writing one on one? We're, you, we're, just, we're just giving feedback from a, just, just, just writing feedback, just generic feedback on what makes so, good writing and what, what doesn't. Yeah. But, but and, we're talking and about, I'll say, I'll, here. and I'll say, and I, so somewhere between having our own LLMs, mm -hmm. our own language, and is, is using a, 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 data set of texts, let's say 50, right? And training the LLM, OpenAI just opened this up last week so that we can then, we can now do this. I don't know how to do it yet. Um, David Cole is a, a real advocate for this. I do think that is absolutely a way to go. I have not given up yet on prompt engineering, prompt mm -hmm. design as being able to do that too. And I think both roads might come together. Like if you're prompt engineering on something that's been trained with 50 um, essays that we say are good essays, you'll probably get a better response. I think you'll still need to do the prompt engineering. Um, and I think we can get really close with, with good prompts as well. So I think it's both. Yeah. Well, in the past, you, you would, you, when, we, when I first joined, you were using mm -hmm. 
you know, Angela Davis, Maya Angelou, and other feminist kind of perspectives and saying, developing thinking partners based on the body of work of these personas, who they are, who, who I mean, and, and so how can you do that for admissions officers without a body of work? Of so it wasn't, it wasn't based on the body of work, though. It was based on the same, the same LLMs that we're using here. But the LLMs have they all know. of Angela Davis's words and they, are thus informed by that persona much more deeply than trying to trying to create a persona around an admissions officer. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, but no, no, no. I think the I question think of the data think, set. Well, so maybe, that is why a data set would help. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe uh, maybe these AIs are better at transactional kinds of writing because they are mostly simpler and mostly template, I mean, oftentimes template driven uh, than say, you know, fiction, poetry and the like. Um, I don't know. I was just, that's the first yeah, thought I'm not I sure had. either. I think they're awfully good at narrative, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think we have to, we have to find out. Um, Purposely came here having done some of this work and uh, knowing Terry wrote this poem and wanted to go here. But I want to kind of leave space here um, in the next 15, 20 minutes, whatever we have left for your thoughts. Where do we go next? What are you thinking about? How can we help Chris? Let's put it that way. <laughs> I like treating Chris as we're, we're all consultants. Okay. Scott, you're a consultant. And we're going to give Chris some ideas of how, how to use AI in his classroom around this. Is that fair, Chris? That's great. Yeah. Okay. And uh, well, it sounds like a bit of a segue. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, the next step is to talk a little bit about like what, what we think the audience is. And so I guess I'm kind of curious what Jessica and your research, like your next step was kind of being explicit about thinking audience. And then where did you go from there with your, uh, the research? Um, well, after audience spending time having students and uh, after audience, um, I have to turn off my oven is beeping, but one sec, <laughs> <laughs> but after audience talking about, um, purpose, okay. which is clear and then, okay, wait one sec. It's okay. We can do that. So you got to deal with kitchen issues over everything. <laughs> No, it's okay. No, no. So, so I'll jump in and we'll get back to you, Jessica, in a second. Right. I one one of the other thoughts that I thought is that if we had different networks where we could have people start getting gathering Test information from their college about um, you know how do you make these admissions decisions, if we could gather that kind of data, that would be useful, I think. And I think Jessica, you did some of that, right? I did some of that, and I could look. Um, mm -hmm what I have from that. And I also have, I was just looking at my computer. I have a bunch of college admission essays and I have approvals for them. So if we also wanted to use those. We can still hear you, keep going. <laughs> to use those to test them out, um, to just see. And they're like, some of them are rough drafts. Some of them are polished. Some of them are ones that were turned in to actual colleges and got them in. Um, so I could offer some of those if that would be helpful. How many is that? I was looking on this computer. I have to look at my work computer, but on this, it looks like I have like 10 to 20. All right. Somewhere between that. So, and I'm just going to do a, um, a quick meta on this. We, you have the data. We have an idea of what to do with it. We have the prompting ideas starting. We have some notion of how we could retrain what we're getting from open AI to look at these essays and, you know, to, to train it up a little bit with these essays. Right. But we don't have the time money team to do that. <laughs> just wanna, I just yeah. need to put that out there as like, yeah. we, we're bubbling with these ideas, but we, we need a, a structure to, to, to place this somewhere. Just, Oh, no, I was more thinking pulling a student essay and doing what you just did and seeing what it does. Yeah. That's all I was thinking. I, I'm not as sophisticated as you to think about large language models. And I don't even know what LLM is. <laughs> I'm learning. No, no, I know. What, what you're saying is right. 
that's right. But some of those have a valuation in them. Like you can say this one was accepted, this one was accepted, this one's a rough draft. Is that possible to identify? Yeah, I think I have to look at it. it it's their folders I haven't looked at in a long okay. time, but yeah, I'm happy to do that. Um, and then to answer Chris, your question for sort of what's next, um, besides sort of focusing on topic and getting students really comfortable and doing what you did of slow, slowing down with topic, the next was to think about repeated patterns that are sort of expectations of the audience in a college admission essay. So that um, one is that it's personal um, and has like a really powerful lead that sometimes captures your attention. Um, another is there's often a really wonderful detail, which you've already caught on to that. That's just good writing. Um, another is that turn we talked about um, where you move from the inside to the out. And that actually is interesting because when we were talking about Terry's poem, I don't, a poem is harder to do that with. And so that idea of maybe having a paragraph at the end that does that, but that making a turn in the writing where you're kind of making explicit to the audience how this story of who you are is ready for this place and why it's a good, why you're a fit there and how there, there's a connection like to your broader interests or who you want to be and what pathway you wanna take, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense. I, it makes me feel like this notion of making a college admissions officer maybe is you know, not the way to go. Um, Chris, when you mentioned earlier about resilience um, and you wanted the details under that, one of the thought I had was, how could we make that into like that little piece and these other little pieces that you just mentioned, Jessica, um, how like each of the thinking partners or each of the templates that we're using, maybe they need to break something down more. Like, so, so when you say that needs more resilience, the kid can go to the computer and say, okay, what well, I don't know, know what Mr. Sullivan is talking about with the resilience here. And then the AI could come back and say, here are some examples of resilience, right? Um, perhaps. Yeah. Or some I idea. guess I was thinking that, you know, like um, resilience is a common theme. And I was trying to get them to write specifically to, to illustrate that theme. Mm -hmm. So the other idea that might be really helpful is it's not mine, it's yours, Paul. But in that book, I, ha I don't have it next to me, and I'm embarrassed because it's it's been a number well, of years. But if by the could... way, there chapter four is way up. If anyone before you leave here goes to the top, well, it's you'll there. See a, a link to the it. book in chapter four is up there. No, it's but okay. Yeah. I think I think don't go there now. The genre <laughs> elements, the repeated patterns, like the turn, like the, the introduction that's like capturing and surprising. Um, and turning those into templates to ask, have AI ask about those elements to make sure they're there, to give feedback about them. I think that would be a really helpful way. It's almost, it's like having a thinking partner yeah. um, for key moves that you make that are sort of known to be successful in this genre. Hmm. Huh. Other thoughts? I think that's really helpful. But Well, you know, I just think as Jessica's talking about that, I need to articulate that to the students that like that is a seems like a desirable thing. I don't, you know, I, I, you know, we're talking about prompt engineering. It's like teacher prompt engineering too, like um, to open that up a little bit. Yeah. Totally. I think it absolutely starts with teachers doing it, but, but go ahead. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's yeah. What is so, the name of the book that is the, so let's go up there together. Just go, just scroll up. Am I out of that? Yeah, there you go. Here, you're all here now. Cool. Let me get the others. So Scott, use the up arrow to go use up. your arrow key, Scott. Okay, I'm in gallery view. There we go. Oh, okay. There we go. Yep. Here. Oh, we lost Jessica. That's the book, and and there's the chapter. Oh. Or Scott, if you uh, hit your M key and then just click on the table above us. Okay. Oh, I got Sorry. it. Sorry. All right. 
Cool, cool. And hopefully Jessica will find us. Oh, you found us. Good. So, so this is just another room here on Kuma Space. And if you click on Real World, World Writing for Secondary Students, you'll find where the book is. And if you click on um, the Now Comment logo there, you'll find Chapter 4. Uh, what happened? Oh, you're... Oh, you're right? People went up, up to the book. book. Oh, oh, and then we're back. we're back. Okay, okay. now we're back. Now we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, we're, Terry going we're, going down down we're going back down now. Marina, we're going back down. I, I, have, have, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Well, okay, well, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. A, bit, a bit. It's okay, it's Scott, okay, go Scott, go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, um, I'm just I'm wondering. Just wondering all right, that's sorry, really that's weird. Really weird. Exactly. What is that? What is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, oh. Don't know what to do for sure. Again, Scott? Okay. 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 I think that worked. I think that worked. No, there's, there's, okay. Okay. Don't know. Don't know. I, I, I know. I know. I know. I'm new. I know I'm new. And I'll. And I'll. And I'll. And maybe I'll. Maybe I'll. Oh, oh, Scott. Scott. Are, are, are you perhaps, perhaps on in different, in different, two different two tabs? tabs? That may be that weird. Nope. Nope. Okay. okay. We can, I can hear you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. We'll, we'll yeah, figure it out. We can deal with it. It's just echoing. <laughs> but but we're, talking, we're talking. We're doing a lot of talking, talking about, about so the, the. I'm sorry. I'm this sorry, is really, this really getting really me. Getting me. Um, the, um, the building the building audience. audience. But what about what building, about building the, 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 student the student, and then having the student do the evaluator, so that they're looking at the essay from from the perspective of the admissions officer. Paul, you're, Paul, you're muted. Thanks. Thanks. I don't know so, if you already so, talked about that, so I was just so kind of a... So, Scott, so, somehow, somehow you have two have different, different on. I don't know how it is, but it's okay. It's okay. We'll figure we'll it out. We'll figure it out. As we go. As we go. Except, Except I'm not going to be to. Maybe, maybe. Just check this out. Okay. Okay. All right, so, All right, so I think Scott, I think you, Scott were you were suggesting. No, I'm, I'm echoing too, too, right? Okay, okay. Talk, talk. I'm going to go out and come back, see if it's me. Yeah, yeah. Explain, what explain what Scott's, Scott's idea, idea is. Dude, are, are, are we going? going? I think he's coming back. There we go. There we go. Hey there. Hey there. No, it's no, it's echo. Echo. Why? Why? Okay. Okay. So what so was what Bob, was Bob, what, what, what was Scott's, what was Scott's idea? idea? Bob, I think you said I like Bob, Scott's idea. Oh, the notion of having students play the admin officer is great. Cool. Um, you you mean acting it out? No, do using AI to do it. Bob, can you talk? Yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah. I mean, I heard yeah, the idea was essentially to ask students to respond to each other's essays using the oh. various moves that were just shared by Jessica. And so basically just internalizing those moves. And so, I mean, and what, what, Chris, what do you think? Is that something you, you teach currently? Do you teach those moves? Yeah, that's the, I think that's the idea with, I think AI as thinking partner, eventually you internalize that, those things that you're looking for. I don't think students come naturally to the kind of things we're talking about, especially with this genre. There's so much weight on it you know, to have them, first of all, just to get something out that they feel like is worthy seems to be a big deal. And, and then for them to uh, think about the moves, I think AI can help them uh, in the, I think, I mean, I'm not sure, but I think going through going that through process that. and getting that feedback, maybe um, then maybe they internalize it. And my experience too, and, and, and the research I did on this, like the whole 
focus of that research is the importance of teaching these moves. And students don't know the audience to play the audience. I, th I love the idea of peer review and yeah. like a traditional peer review, giving them things to look at, but not until they've gone through like learning mini lessons about how to do a cat, write a catchy lead for, or, and, and learning about what a college admission essay officer is like and what they're looking for in the genre. Um, and the, the idea of the turn, that's what I think would be really helpful because mm -hmm. AI could ask the questions about those things and actually help teachers teach in a way those because those are certain strategies that are necessary to succeed in the essay and students don't know how to do those so they can't do peer review successfully without knowing them they could do it at the end after having experience and getting taught and practicing yeah, that, yeah I, that, I, 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 there it is forget it <laughs> no no go ahead oh you, it's hard for you to talk right scott's got a chat he's he's, he's out of commission <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Scott, I think it's about having earbuds or something, but um, you shouldn't. Not everyone does, so I'm not sure. You and I can get on sometime and we'll, we'll test why this is happening. Um, Jessica, can, can you say again, I'm sorry, but is are the moves all explicitly in Chapter 4, do you think? And, and I'll have to test, have to you, test on you, you on a book you wrote 11, 11 years ago. I'll years. look. I can do that between now and next week. Okay, okay. I think they are in chapter four, but if they aren't, I can share more. Okay. Okay. So I want so to propose, I want to propose this, this, that we come back, we come back together, together next week next... and we actually try to do some of the AI um, moves. I mean, and and this is never either or, right? Um, yes, they should give each other feedback using those moves. And um, if we can give them some examples through AI, they'll do that better, right? Um, is what I kind of think. And then and then students, and then the writer themselves can say, hey, I want to go to my peer to get a, a notion of this, or I want to go to AI and get it, right? So, yeah. Um, so let's work on those moves. Um, I will have it set up so people can actually make um, either a thinking partner or a template on Youth Voices. Um, and then we can, and I'll have a couple of examples, and we can move from there. Sounds like we're making progress, I think. I see some thumbs up. Any other thoughts? I'm going to yeah, take a wild yeah. stab at it here. I'm going to mute. Good, and good. I, bet, I bet Scott can talk without echoing. Is going to be That's my hypothesis. Oh, are you in the same room? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Um, okay, Scott, can Scott, you talk? Try. Hey, does that work? It does. Yes, yes. I okay. wonder why. I'm not sure. Chris, you're off the point to me. I, I think it might be <laughs> Jessica's uh, computer, I think, is where the echoing is coming from. Oh, don't play on Jessica. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's fair enough. Okay, Scott, you get last word here. <laughs> oh, geez. That's a lot of... Uh... You're a parent, yeah, you're a parent yeah, of, a, of a senior right. <laughs> who's writing this essay. That's why you get last word. <laughs> I guess I wasn't, I wasn't trying to go for peer review in so much as a place to be to play and be um, where, where you wouldn't even have to be vulnerable to use the AI then to be able to look at the moves um, and to then consider the student. Um, I guess in all of this, and I'm, and I'm new to it, to this group, which I love everything I'm hearing though right now, um, I, I don't wanna fall into the assumption that the student is one because this what, what we saw earlier is there's a student today who wrote an amazing college admissions essay that was a poem, right? So what if there was a way to say, okay, well, what happens? What, if, what about that student who's writing it as a poem? Or what about our multilingual students who are who are writing that way, you know, and mixing in, but, but telling their story and, and expressing their culture? Is there a way to flip it so that the, the you know, it's about the student and not about the, I don't know, I, I'm not articulating this perfectly right, but to flip it so it, it, it can almost match the student and allow them to still have their voice as a writer. All right. I said you had last word, but anybody can respond to that if you'd like. <laughs> well, one, one thing that I wanted to mention is okay. I always look for something that I've already done that is sim as similar as possible to what it is that I want to do because I'm lazy. And to me, you know, personal narratives, this, this is just a, a restricted form of personal narrative, right? 
Maybe yeah, I'm and wrong, Jessica, but... yeah, Jessica calls them turning point narratives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About so I mean, if we're teaching personal narrative, then we should have some schema that we can apply to the essay, the admission essay. Yeah, but I bet there are some differences too. Oh yeah, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to continue to uh, next week. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. All right, night. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, for Thank you everybody. Bye. See you.